Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Just a couple of weeks ago, to be precise, 15th of May, OpenAI launched their cloud-based software engineering agent, which is called Codex. In today's video, I will show you a short demonstration of Codex so that you understand if this is something that you have to look at or you can just ignore it as any other AI agent. I have taken ChatGPT Plus subscription just to try out Codex. Towards the end of this video, I will also share my opinion about Codex versus Cursor. Just make sure you watch this video till the end. To be honest, I have been using AI agents for a while now. I am a prolific user of Cursor for all the side projects that I am working on, demo projects and even one of the application that I'm building, I use Cursor. And I had pretty good experience with Cursor, just that when I deep dive into the application with Cursor, sometimes it missed the context. That is the only complaint that I have with Cursor. So I have been exploring multiple other AI agents. I've explored Bold.new, I've explored GitHub Copilot Workspace, Lovable, Windsurf, and multiple other agents. So when OpenAI, for the very first time, they initially did not launch Codex. They actually started with Codex CLI. If you're not aware, Codex CLI was launched in April, just a month before Codex. I was not very interested in Codex CLI. One, it's just a CLI application. So you have to use it in your terminal. It is not very compatible with your IDE. And then Codex CLI is an experimental project. It is not yet stable. It contains bugs, incomplete features. When I read all these, I thought, okay, maybe I can try Codex CLI later. It's not the right time at this point. But last month, OpenAI made an exciting announcement. They are launching Codex as part of ChatGPT Plus, ChatGPT Pro subscription. Now the point about Codex, it is a cloud-based software engineering agent which can fix bugs for you, which can review the code, perform refactoring and also it can write the code for you. If you have tried GitHub Copilot workspace, Codex gives you exact same use and feel. For example, this is my cloud-based Codex agent instance. So you can just use it as part of your chat GPT. So just go to chat GPT, you'll find Codex. Integrate that with your Git. So you just need to add the GitHub app and then you select one of your GitHub repositories. As I told you, just like GitHub Copilot workspace, if you used it in the past. So right now I'm connected to one of my repositories that I'm working on. So it's a Rust based application. Now let's see if Codex can actually perform a task on it. So first of all, I'll just ask Codex to explain the project. So there are two options. One is you can ask and second, you can use it to code. So first I'll show you how you can ask Codex to explain the code. I think a lot of AI assistants can also do it today. Even if you have GitHub Copilot on your Visual Studio code, it can kind of explain in detail about the project. It's exactly the same thing. You can ask it to explain. I notice that it takes little more time when you go for code, but when you ask it to explain something, it's much faster. And good thing about Codex, it can perform multiple tasks at once. So you can use Codex for parallel computing, not parallel computing, my bad. You can use it for parallel tasks. Right now I'm asking it to explain the project. In the meanwhile, I can also ask it to maybe add UI or add front end logic to the application. So right now my Lust, Rust application is just a CLI tool. So I will just add it to add the front end logic to the application so that it can be 
accessible from web so while it is working on explaining the code for me right i can run another task so this is one good thing that i have noticed so it can perform multiple tasks at a time however the time that it takes is something that is not acceptable probably open ai is working on it so you can see that at this point it might take from 1 minute to 30 minutes as well looking at how ai agents are progressing this time is little too much looks like this particular thing is done explain the project so i'll just click on this and here you go you have a detailed description of the project so it says this repository hosts a rust to do command line application as i told you this is just a cli application at this point i asked in another task to codex to generate the logic for the web application or front end let's see if it can perform in the meanwhile you have the complete details of the project and because i have written this application i can confirm pretty much it explain the project in the right way so it talked about the ci cd it also specifically talked about the typescript file uh, which hosts uh, the application perfect it looks good then let's go back it is still working on this task this is one complaint that i have it is taking a lot of time even when you compare with uh, github copilot workspace of course you can see the instructions right now what exactly are the is the task that it is performing so you have a very detailed log that you can check this will help you in uh, troubleshooting as well or this will also help building the logic you can see how codex is actually going step by step so that if you are a beginner especially in terms of coding you can learn a lot however this experience is better with multiple other ai agents even if you use bold.new or copilot workspace or even cursor you can get much detailed information with codex you can also enable internet access however enabling internet access is kind of a risk like it comes with a security risk uh, for example let's say you ask codex agent to fix an existing github issue if it's a public github issue and let's say if it is an open source application then it's not something that you have to worry about but let's say if it's a application where this application on the github repo is sensitive then you can see here very clearly in the codex documentation it might read some information which can be of security risk for you but enabling internet access is useful if you are working on open source projects if you are working on your hobby project or if you are building something interesting where you want to take help from codex let's see if this particular thing is done perfect so it added the logic server.js uh it also added a typescript file and now there is an option to create a pull request so this is interesting right it can also create a pull request onto your project of course this is not something new there are ai agents which can create a pull request on your behalf codex can also do it now overall when i spent some time with it what i personally felt codex can improve a lot in multiple aspects especially one is with the context uh, the reason why i was looking for alternative when uh, i was working with cursor is especially the context when you get deep into the application cursor sometimes misses the context it is same with codex as well in fact cursor is much better and also it is taking a lot of time i'm not sure if open ai is going to change it going ahead uh, one thing we have to be uh, little partial uh, in this aspect because codex is very very new it's not even 3 weeks from the time it launched so maybe in the next versions it might get better another good aspect it is using a very powerful model so it uses o3 and you all know the sway benchmarking sw benchmarking for o3 is very good so because of that the sway benchmarking for codex is also pretty good so when you ask it to fix an issue or maybe when you ask it to write code 
although it is taking time, the code that it writes is actually pretty good. Now, finally, if I have to compare with cursor, because I have been using it prolifically, or I've been using it very, very much, I would say I still prefer cursor. One, it comes with a tight ID integration. I personally prefer having an extension and asking questions to the extension, walking along with the extension. It pretty much feels like a companion or it pretty much feels like I'm working with someone who is sitting next to me and someone who is better than me writing code. Now this experience with Codex does not give me the same vibe. That is one of the reasons and the slowness when you compare it with cursor, cursor is pretty much faster. Yeah, these are some of the reasons why I would still go with cursor. And if you want to try it, you can give it a try. But saying that you have to go for ChatGPT Plus or ChatGPT Pro, uh, which comes for roughly 20 US dollars. So if you want to give it a try, you can go ahead. In future, this might also change. You might get um, access to Codex, maybe as part of the free tire, or even in ChatGPT Plus and Pro, there might be new restrictions. Right now, there are no restrictions. You can write as much as code as you're looking for. So this is about Codex, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. And if you want me to try any AI agent in specific, also let me know in the comment section. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.